better. Welcome everyone to a new A Better Day, A Better Life TV show new format to help you organize the information that you get from these shows. I'm your host, Debbie Givens, and I'm here to give you some tools and tips, uh, advice, information, and inspiration uh, to improve your mind, body, spirit, and life. Today's topic is herbs, using them for medicinal purposes. This science has different names to it, depending on where you come across it. I've been doing a lot of uh, research on the internet and found some different names for it. Herbal medicine is the art and science of using herbs for promoting health and preventing and treating illnesses. Herbalists are people who dedicate their lives to working with uh, medicinal plants. They include native healers, scientists, naturopaths, holistic medical doctors, researchers, writers, herbal pharmacists, that's my favorite one, and herbal pharmacists, medicine makers, wild crafters, harvesters, and herbal farmers, just to name a few. While herbalists are quite varied, the common love and respect for life, especially the relationship between humans and plants, unites them. Persons specializing in the therapeutic use of plants may be medical herbalists, traditional herbalists, acupuncturists, midwives, that's a curious one for me, <laughs> naturopathic ph uh, physicians, and even nutritional therapists. Can you imagine that? A therapist for your nutrition. Herbology, healing herbs, herbalism are just a few labels given to this wonderful art. Then it gets cultural. There's Yorubian, Native American, Centurion, uh, Yoruveda, traditional Chinese medicine, some of you probably have heard of that, and the Americanized version, the traditional Western herbalism. I have with me today my fellow m and producer and friend, Paul Ortiz, who has come to the show uh, to lend us his knowledge and experience with herbs, using them for treating and healing various ailments and conditions. Paul, we know each other from uh, the studio, but you and I have spent time in the supermarket together. Uh, what, have, what do you have for us today? Yes, thank you so much for inviting me on your show, Debbie. Appreciate it. We've been talking about these things for a long time, and uh, finally we decided to share it with the public, with the general public. So thank you for coming on the show, and, and thank you for you know to, to sharing your vast knowledge yes. here. So what have you brought us? Okay, so before we get started, let's go to the fundamentals and the basics of natural healing. I'm a practitioner of natural healing ever since I was 19 years old. Wow. So I've been practicing this for, for a long, long time, and on many, many occasions it has taken me uh, out of the complicated health conditions that I've come across. It's saved my life many, many times. Many wow. different modalities of natural healing. Okay. So I want to give you a breakdown, but before we start doing that, let's start with the basics and the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Before you get into herbalism or vegetarianism or diets or juicing or anything, you got to start with the basics correct. Water. Now you have some elements here. Let's okay, say we've made that change with the water. Now you right. have some, let's let's go to the um, items. This is about herbs, so right. we're talking about herbs. We have some spices here, exactly. uh, you know, both come from plants. So, exactly. um, so why don't you talk about uh, what okay. you have here? So uh, let's uh, talk about the uh, the seaweed. So if we're talking about, some people like to cook the seaweed. Some people, This is a snack right here. Mm. And lots of times people give their children potato chips, snacks, right. and there's too, oh, much, I do. <laughs> too much salt in it and yeah. too much preservatives and chemicals. So. If you're going to uh, raise your children, you need to raise them on the proper snacks and the proper diet so that they grow up healthy. The problem right. with the modern day child is the hyperactivity because there's too much sugar and too much caffeine in the snacks and in the food. Right. So the parents need to do some research and, and start learning and start choosing healthier snacks. And isn't that contributing children. probably to the fact that a lot of kids have, what is it, not ADHD, because that's for adults, but isn't, don't they have an, act, an attention de de deficiency or deficit? Yeah, it contributes uh, to that because mm. what, what happens is mm -hmm. when you eat too much junk food and fast food, then you're depleting the body's nervous system of, mm. the, vi of the vital B-complex vitamins mm -hmm. and many other nutrients that we're supposed to have. When I was a child, we ate, you know, candy, sugar, cake, soda, so on and so forth, right, but right. our parents did not have the uh, these, the these fast food that we have mo in no. modern modern times. Mm -hmm. There was not that many McDonald's around, no, Burger King, right. Taco Bells, and all those. Uh, and back then food. it was a treat, you know, because food is so expensive now. You run out of your food stamps, whatever. If you're at you know that level of support, um, you end up at these places because it's fast and. You know, I can't say cheap. I mean, I, get, I mean, they got a dollar it's menu. Affordable, it's it's affordable. affordable, you know. But the when quality you're feeding is one, low. Oh, much low. I mean, none of that stuff has exactly. nu nutrients, and people try to give you guides. My nutritionist gave a guide of what to eat and what not to eat if you have to eat out. 
So. Exactly. And then also, let me... Let so, me and you recommended the seafood because... The seaweed. The seaweed. The seaweed I'm sorry. Snacks. The sea. Okay, the seaweed natural snacks seaweed. Because it has natural salt. Okay. And then it has different flavors. Some of them come with... Uh, they roast it with, sea, with the sesame oil, which is very healthy in Ayurvedic uh, Indian medicine. Mm -hmm. And then the olive oil. If you do research on olive oil, olive oil is very, very curative and very medicinal and very helpful for many, many health conditions. Right, and, and right. Illnesses. Both ingesting it and, and, uh, and inside, and out the, inside and out the body. Exactly. So, it's very good for yeah. the skin and for the hair, for the face. It's very good. Right. But people don't know that. You right, know, people, right. And then there's different That's types of olive oil. That's why they keep it in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. There's different grades of olive oil. And if you get olive oil, you want to use the first pressed, cold, cold pressed, pressed I heard, yeah. and uh, extra virgin. Right, right. So That's first pressed, cold pressed, and extra virgin. Of course, if you have all three qualities, it's going to be a little bit higher in, in price. Yes, But yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. But it's worth it. But Top anyway, work. Okay, so, so, so some of the other so now, items you have here. I remember now we also, spoke about... Uh, we, we've also been talking about this uh, herb right. that's called uh, epazote in Spanish. Epazote, the okay. Mexicans call it epazote. Right. And the epazote is one of those herbs that's been used since ancient times mm -hmm. and it heals over 101 different illnesses and diseases. Wow. So people in many, like you said earlier in the show, you know, indigenous people, cultural people right. know about these herbs. And right. In Indian, Native time, Americans, Africans. Exactly. People from Central South America. Right. North, North America, America. Mm -hmm. and we have lost that knowledge and that information, mm -hmm. and this is why we're not connected with Mother Nature, why we have more cancer than they had in ancient times, more diabetes, right. more Alzheimer's, it's, uh, more uh, asthma, respiratory problems. And particularly diabetes, you know, um, between that and heart disease, I mean, I'm not going to throw out any um, statistics here, but it seemed to me that this, this it, it's so prevalent that um, it, it must be, you know, coming from the food that that we eat and it's part and and um it's it's one thing to have evolved and uh, as people and we're more civilized maybe <laughs> but um We've again lost the connection with mother nature right and, this is and why. so we are, we're getting more diseases and more illnesses it, early and 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 there's all sorts of um yeah, yeah, illnesses things from birth you know d birth defects and whatnot and Correct. so um, you know, so this is this is important, and there's a lot of places to. Do. So, what else do you have okay, here? Okay, right here, I have this wonderful mushroom, that's called chaga. Most people don't even know about this. This has been used also since ancient times, and this this company combines it and mixes it with uh, the oil of oregano. Oh. Those people who know oh. about natural healing, they mm -hmm. know about the benefits and the power of the oil of oregano for many many things, oh, really? especially boosting oh. up the immune system oh, okay. and killing germs and viruses, and maybe even you know. Bacteria, germs, and maybe even viruses. Mm, it's mm. very, very special. When you do the research, you mm -hmm. see that people have used this not just here in America, but in uh, European countries. Because the European countries are much more advanced, you know, with the use of uh, herbalisms in in the, in their um, in treating their their, their citizens. Right. France, Germany, England, Switzerland. So they're All relying a lot less on pharmaceuticals. Exactly. And I, you know, we we sort of need a return to that. The pharmaceutical exactly. industry is is out of. When I say out of control, when you hear about how much is spent or how much the pharmaceutical companies make, we're talking billions. about billions. We're ingesting stuff that make us make them rich because exactly. we 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 constantly have to go to them. I knock on wood. I don't have major diseases and illnesses, and I'm not on any major medicines. And I don't know how that is, except for the fact that I I do take vitamins, but I you know I drink tea, and so and we're going to talk about tea because we're getting closer to some of these items here. So mushroom. Yeah, this mushroom um, called chaga is very powerful, mm. and it's even been reported and done uh, experiments that it even helps the body to fight off cancer. Mm. So Mother Nature knows her stuff. Yeah, and there's a lot of things in nature, natural, that, exactly. that fight cancer and heart disease, which seem to be very um, big diseases, um, uh, especially for us uh, Americans. Exactly. Now, here you okay. have Moringa. Now, a, you and I spoke about that a couple of times. Yes, many, many times. Here's another herb that's been used since ancient times. It's called Moringa. This mm -hmm. one is from a company, an African company. Mm -hmm. But Moringa grows all over the world. I think it grows in India, Africa, Central and South America. This is another herb that's been used since ancient times to heal many, many different illnesses and diseases. And uh, as you mentioned in the program before, at the beginning of the introduction, that a lot of these herbs also help to prevent illnesses and diseases. So you don't only wait till you become ill and then use the herbs. Just keep you keep using it mm. as a preventative. Exactly. And now, and this is listed as a superfood. What we also have another superfood on the table, which is maca. You, I brought the um, the 
the capsule version of it, exactly. and you bought the powder bought version. The powder. Of, um, it's recommended for women in particular because we're, we're, I don't know, I'm not gonna say we're pill poppers, but we do uh, tend to take our supplements in, in capsule form, in mm -hmm. pill form, it's powder form. You have powder, this is mm -hmm. the powder in a, a capsule form. Um, this is another superfood, and superfoods have so many nutrients in it that it's almost a no-brainer that you should add these um, exactly. to, maca, your, to your diet. And, and maca is a root that's been used since ancient times, and it helps with all kinds of illnesses and diseases, especially with balancing the hormones. Mm -hmm. You know, the men's hormones and the women's hormones, after women reach a certain age, you know, the, the glands don't produce all the hormones that they used to when the, when the person was younger, so then they go through all this, what they call menopause, menopausal changes. So the mistake that a lot of women make, instead of coming back to Mother Nature and using the, the natural hormone balances that Mother Nature has, like maca, they run to the, to, you know, to the pharmaceuticals, and the pharmaceuticals give you synthetic drugs right. that are supposed to balance your synthetic, hormones. Right, synthetic and hormones. And what happens mm -hmm. is that some of those things have so side much effects. side effects mm -hmm. that it gives, even gives you cancer. So I have lady friends that have told me, Paul, you know, I was using this uh, this synthetic uh, hormone replacement injections or pills or tablets, whatever. They tell me I had to let it go. I had to leave it alone because it was giving me all kinds of crazy, you know, symptoms and conditions and so on and so forth. So you have to remind people, Mother Nature has natural hormone balancers, and maca is one of them. Now Since let's ancient not time. right now let's not um, not I won't say delude people, but lots of things come with side effects. What the pharmaceuticals can create whole conditions exactly. <laughs> or illnesses from the side effects that you end up in taking items. And I'm pretty um, astute about that or, and, a, and, a, and a staunch uh, um, vocalist on that because what I, of what I saw when I was helping my mother uh, when she, after she had a stroke and I saw all these medications that they put her on based on some things that were loose and she was not a diabetic but she was on the border and when she took these medicines after her her stroke she ended up you know with full full blown di not full blown diabetes but let's just say she was always mm -hmm. um, testing in the range uh, you know, her, we, we take in her blood every day. When we finally got her off of these medicines, these medications, including antipsychotic medicines, which were misplaced for somebody who had a stroke, um, her blood sugar returned to normal. And so this is one of the reasons that this, this show, a Better Day, A Better Life, is going to be covering uh, her herbalism because the I want people to look at an alternative to pharmaceutical, you know, to, to regular man-made medicines and really think about ditching them and, and, and returning to nature, as yes, you said, because, as much as possible. because you, there are side effects in, in some of these items, but it depends on what it mixes with. Mm -hmm. and, and how you use them. And, and basically, a number of these items are um, diuretics, or they might be blood thinners, and so it just, the, the conflict or the side effect is really the fact that it's going to, um, uh, lessen the effect of a pharmaceutical mm -hmm. that you're that you're taking, and so if you weren't on pharmaceuticals, all this stuff is open to you without without worrying about. It's like, well, if, you know, if I take you know a birth control pill, it, you know, or or if, if you if you're a diabetic, if you're taking some, some something for the heart, if you're taking blood thinners because you've had clots, mm -hmm. you, th th people in those categories do have a concern when they when they're having these uh, when they're deciding to make the switch to. Um, to herbs and and spices uh, as 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 far as um, alleviating, uh, uh, alleviating uh, health conditions, right? Improving health um, conditions. But if you're not on anything right. uh, or anything significant like that, you know, you're pretty much open to taking all yeah. of the, to 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 adopting this new um, well, healthy it's not new, natural, it's ancient. It's right? Ancient. Right? Yeah, it'll be new to to us who's right. used to you know Burger King and McDonald's, Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> And Taco people Bell. have, and people have, people have to remember also <laughs> before the pharmaceutical companies existed, what were people using on this planet for thousands of thousands of years? Well, they went to their medicine doctor, you know, particularly the Native Americans and even um, you know the Chinese and Africans. You know, there was always somebody in the tribe, the group, the culture mm -hmm. that to go to. You exactly, know, and, you know, and they were using herbs. And, and people themselves had knowledge and information. Mothers, grandmothers handed it down to their daughters, and fathers handed it down to their sons. You know, because you always didn't have available the medicine man or curandero as we say in Spanish or an herbalist so people had to have their own knowledge and their own understanding and information of natural healing because mm. it just goes hand in hand with raising children if you're gonna raise children you got to know about diet you got to know about 
the, all the different illnesses and things that can afflict your children. If you're growing livestock, you know, raising livestock in a farm, you have to be able to take care of the animals. Otherwise, animals can get sick and they can die. And then how are you going to sustain your family and yourself? So this was common knowledge. Mm. You know what I mean? It's coming back, but in small bits. I mean, I read and hear about people who grow their own herbs now. Um, you know, now in being in Manhattan, uh, uh, being in an apartment, of course, having major gardens and, and, and major land to, to grow your own fruits and vegetables is, and f with trees is not feasible. So what certain you know people are doing, and it's available in the supermarket. I mean, there you can go in the path mark, and they, they even used to have it by the checkout. There were packets of um, of, of herbs and, and some small vegetables that you could probably um, grow in your own home. But it, it's going to be more. Oh, this, these items don't. I'll cost an arm and a leg. Uh, for example, the turmeric, um, and we both know. Uh, actually, I know from you to exactly. to, to buy turmeric and to get it for a dollar forty nine exactly. in a ninety nine cent store. Exactly. You can uh, also get it. Of course, you can get it in capsule form mm. in the health food store. Mm -hmm. But once again, if you cannot afford it, you can still use the turmeric that's sold in the uh, ninety nine cent stores right. or the regular bodegas or the uh, supermarkets. Right. The supermarkets will have it. It'll, it'll cost a little bit more, and it's and it's with yeah. the spices. But um, exactly. talk, to, talk to us. But turmeric. Now, so turmeric. Um, comes in root form, and I think I read some place where they boil it. You boil it and, and uh, let it dry out, and this is where it starts to take on its um, yellowish color. Exactly. Um, it's used in cooking, you know, in Indian food, obviously. It's what gives um, curry its color and its taste. And the Caribbean also. Mm. The Caribbean uh, uh, cuisine uses a lot of uh, curry. Curry, so oh, really? one of the yeah, ingredients in curry is yeah, turmeric. At the, the, the and Jamaican cumin, place. And curcumin, you know, cumin. Right, cumin, right. Cumin, you know, so, but anyway, getting back into the uh, the benefits of the turmeric, yeah. when you do the research, right. turmeric is good for many, many things Man, inside the body. I mean, it's very good for inflammation, especially right. inflammation. Anti inflammatory, and, I was And they say when that. you do the research, they say that in India, you see very few people, if any at all, with conditions like. Alzheimer's mm. and dementia mm. because there's something in the turmeric that keeps the circulation in the brain going the way that Mother Nature meant for it to go. So in this country, people's memory and attention span oh. starts to go downhill, yeah. you know, in their 30s and their 40s. And yeah, their 50s. even but us, in aren't, aren't, we, aren't we having that problem? Exactly. <laughs> but people in problem. India in old age, they're having very sharp memory, very focus, very sharp focus, mm. con concentration, mm -hmm. and attention spans. The mm -hmm. elderly in India, so the reason why they must be having that is because they're using things like, like turmeric and they that's been in their, uh, uh, in their, their diet for, 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 for thousands of years. Now, and, and but they're lucky because their food, I won't say it's based on it, but some of it is. Now, how do we get to use this uh, turmeric? Um, I have a, a list here that says um, it's used to actually color butter. Uh, okay. And some cheeses. Okay. Um, now I like to eat cheese, so that's good news. I just have to figure out which cheese has this. But it would be great if it came in some of the foods that I eat. But obviously, I have to change what I eat. Mm -hmm. uh, without having to go to Indian food, you know, it would be nice instead of of taking it the way you ingest it. Now you tell us you take this on well, a regular basis. Well, I, I give this to my mother, and mm. I put it in capsules because she's not very fond of the taste. Mm, you know? mm. And some people, if you put it, if you sprinkle it on their food, some people don't like the dye, they mm. don't like the color, they don't right. like the taste. So in those cases, you know, I tell people, well, I, I'll put it in capsules. You can get em empty gelatin right, capsules right. in health food stores, right. and you get yourself a nice little bowl, mm -hmm. open up the capsule, and dip it into the powder, and then seal it up and put it in a Ziploc bag and write, you know, turmeric capsules. So you can make your own turmeric capsules and still benefit even though you don't like the taste or you don't like the color or you don't like the flavor, you can still benefit from it. That's how I take it. Sometimes I'll take it at the end of the meal, during the meal, I'll just put a tablespoon or a teaspoon and I'll swallow mm. it with juice or with water or two okay. or three times that, a day. Okay, so that's how you ingest it. That's um, how I ingest it. When you first told me about this and I was, I was taking it, I was trying to do it by putting it in certain foods, and it was kind of overwhelming the taste of some of the foods. I tried to put it in yogurt, you know, like vanilla yogurt, mm -hmm. and um, and some other things. It goes well with rice, but you know, you're gonna have to eat a lot of rice to get the benefits. Um, and rice is not a part of um, my cuisine, um, you know, soul food. You don't eat rice every day, so. Uh, but you know, so, are, so I have to find a, a consistent way to, to, to use it so that I can stay to continue to use exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, because it has consistent. a lot of benefits. Yeah. yeah. Consistent. It, it has so many benefits. I wouldn't feel under the weather right now if I probably had kept just 
having finding a way to put it in my food. Exactly, um, and it's also good for the skin. It's also mm -hmm. good for many. It's good for the bones. It's good for the respiratory tract. It's mm -hmm. good for the uh, reproductive tract right. area. It says to treat dis um, digestive and liver problems as well, and, and detoxify skin the bodies diseases also. and wounds. Yeah, detoxifies. It's very. So this is why in India, you know, the elderly are very sharp and still, mm. you know, bright and awake and alert. And the, the memory is good. This is one of the reasons because it's been in their in their cuisine and their menus for many many thousands. Well, I wonder of years. if it's too late to um, to to start taking this and improving your memory or at least slowing down the the uh, the process. It's never too late. You know what I mean? It's never too late. I mm -hmm. mean, once you got your even if you got a foot in the grave, I've heard of stories of people that had one foot in their grave and they had cancer and they turned it all around using all the different modalities mm. and techniques, methods, and systems of that natural healing Mother Nature has to offer. Okay, it well, depends upon your willpower too. Mm, yeah, willpower. willpower and um, your, your your belief system. You know what I'm saying? You do have to change what you eat. You know, I'm I can't start taking this and this and putting this in my shakes if I if I'm still going to McDonald's and, exactly. and 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 going to I well I can go to IHOP I think, but. Um, Let's quickly go into the other items because we're starting to run out of time. Oh, flaxseed, flaxseed. I tell mean, us I, keep, about I, flaxseed. I keep hearing about flaxseed, and I couldn't believe that I was able to buy it for a dollar forty-nine again in my ninety-nine cent store. I didn't even know what it looked like, um, but you know, you keep hearing about flaxseed and flaxseed oil. I'm like, what is the the big deal? Well, you know, it's a big deal. Um, back in the in the in the um, I guess the Chinese and the uh, the, the, the Asians, uh, and I think the, even the Egyptians, it, it was mostly used as a laxative um, because very high in fiber, um, and it has something in it that uh, that absorbs water, and so it, it helps move food through the bowels. Exactly. And um, wow, who has to run out and get milk of magnesia when you can just get flaxseed for a dollar forty nine? Mm -hmm. And when you make your shakes or your salads. Um, uh, you know, you just you just toss them in there, and you're good to, and you're good to go. Uh, it has omega three fatty acid. Exactly the um, oils, the oils, the omega oils. Is isn't very it? And it has protein. I mean, this is it has essential fatty acids in it. It has protein in it. I mean, some of these herbs have more things that you can get from one than one from one item. And uh, uh, one um, morsel of food, uh, you know, like a, a hamburger from wherever or a pizza. Um, it can fight high cholesterol, heart disease, uh, menopausal symptoms. It protects the body from cancer. Uh, some cancers, the breast, uh, colon, and, and prostate. Um, it also comes as an oil. I'm told you should refrigerate that, I guess, when you're not using it. Um, the seeds, I'm told, should be grinded, um, not to eat them like this. I mean, I've only used them in a shake and in a, one of those green drinks. But um, And you should take it with lots of water. That's another thing. Same thing with turmeric, by the, the way. Turmeric. Lots of water, um, preferably alkaline water exactly. or distilled water. Exactly. Um, let's not forget ground cinnamon. Uh, one of my favorite things um, is, is cinnamon. Uh, I like to put it on French toast, uh, but I'm sure I need to find something a little more healthy to put that on. But uh, but cinnamon is is uh, great. You know, it's a spice, um, and it usually, it, it's grown on a tree. It's right. a, it it's comes wood. from a tree. It's like a wood. Yeah, it's like a uh, wild trees. And um, it, you, I guess you see it in the store, it's usually cinnamon sticks and it gets ground like this and so of course you get to sprinkle in it. Um, yeah, many, it many health benefits. Yeah, I, and also, also anti-inflammatory infections, um, cold, common colds. In fact, a number of things of these things fight the common cold and I thought, exactly. why am I suffering? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So then don't also suffer. And stop buying cold remedies and, um, uh, and aspirins and ibuprofen and, and Tylenol and get into uh, to herbs and spices um, that you can just add to your foods every day. But last but not least, uh, these two items, the um, the uh, garlic. garlic and would you, and you, you run into garlic a lot. I mean, garlic, I mean, I'm not going to say garlic bread, you know, run out and eat your garlic bread, but definitely people eat it raw, you know, especially when they're sick. Dandelions you can get in certain supermarkets. I got this in Fairways, and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, add it to salads, um, sandwiches, and you can make and add it to tea. I'm not sure you can make it a tea all by itself. Yeah, you can. Exactly. But um, so we do have to kind of wrap it up. Um, you have the books. We've introduced folks to um, uh, to herbs as uh, medicine, and there'll be future episodes on um, on that because it's, it'd be uh, something that um, I'm hoping to uh, to adopt. And uh, and so the more information you have, perhaps um, you'll be interested in doing the same. Uh, I want to thank you, Paul, for coming on the show and You're sharing your welcome. knowledge and experience on that. You're very and um, was it something you wanted to leave us with? Uh, yes, uh, uh, in spite of this, you know, in spite of using all the natural healing modalities, techniques, methods, and systems, there will still be health issues that uh, you won't be able to overcome because we are being bombarded with so much 
chemicals, toxins in the air, the water, and the food. Mm. So I still recommend to people to go to your doctor, go to your hospital, go to your clinic, because sooner or later, in spite of the fact that you use all of these things, things will overwhelm your body mm. and you will come down with illnesses and diseases mm. and you're going to get certain certain situations where you even the herbs and the natural healing modalities won't give you any relief so you still might have to go to your doctor the clinics and the hospitals and you need to do that it's very important to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and not be an extremist right you, you're saying not to skip the doctor yeah, if you're exactly. lucky you you have a doctor who um will include this in his practice exactly. and he believes in these and and can guide you on when to use some of these items or what you know yeah, if, they, if, they, if they're uh, yeah. They call the, uh, so, the 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 uh, holistic doctors. Right, I've been the, to an uh, alternative medicine doctor exactly. and 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 um, whatnot, and my current doctor also can ascribe to some of this. So, Paul, I want to thank you for coming to the show. Thank you um, very much. Before we go, was there? A, a yeah, sound? I wanted to also let you know. Even I am going to uh, a clinic just for purposes of checking myself up and the diagnostic purposes, and I wanted to send a quick shout out to uh, the Ryan Center, up, uh, the Thoma Adair Ryan Center oh, up yes. in. Uh, in Harlem on 124th and uh, Manhattan Avenue. I want to thank the uh, the staff up there. They've been very helpful to me and mm. very uh, attentive. And I want to give a special shout out to my favorite nurse, uh, Nurse Rashida, and uh, the other cutie pie, who's <laughs> also very sweet and very nice, mm -hmm. uh, Dion. Thank you so very much for taking care of me and looking out for me. Yeah. Having said that, thank you so very much. We'll see you next time. God bless. Uh, thank you, Paul, for coming to the show. Thank you for tuning in. I hope um, that you were able to take some notes and, um, and tune in to future shows where we continue to talk about herbs as medicine and um, also we'll be talking about food as medicine as well um, and so that we can stay healthy. Um, it'll be good food uh, that you'll love to eat, to eat. So I thank you for joining the show. You've been watching A Better Day, A Better Life. I'm your host, Debbie Givens. Have a better day.